Gracie Jiu Jitsu rocks. Welcome to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Rocks podcast, a podcast dedicated to Gracie Jiu Jitsu and all things Gracie, including self defense, competition, anti bullying, women's self defense and empowerment nutrition, and most especially, the people involved in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. This podcast is for the average Joe. It's for anyone who practices, trains, teaches, or just loves to talk about or hear about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. We'll explore the lives of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, how they got involved in the art, and what effect it's had on their lives. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to episode 88 of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Rocks podcast. As always, I'm your host, Marty Josie, and thanks for listening. Today, my guest will be Master Kaiki Elias. But before we get to that, this is the first episode of the new year, so happy new year to everyone. I hope your new year is off to a great start, and I hope you're setting the stage to have the best year ever. So let's start off with a Jiu-Jitsu quote and then we're going to do a Meet the Listener segment, followed by our interview with Master Kaiki. And we'll finish up with the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Okay, our jiu-jitsu quote is, True strength is not always shown through victory. Stand up, try again, and display strength of heart. And that's from Master Hickson Gracie. Okay, moving on to our Meet the Listener segment. And today we'll be meeting Kirsty Mather. So let's meet Kirsty now. Okay, I'm speaking with Kirsty Mather. So welcome to the show, Kirsty. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So let's just start with where you uh, are from and where you train. Cool. All right, so I'm from Timaru in the South Island of New Zealand. And I'm the sole owner and coach of the first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu club here called Timaru Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Nice, nice. And if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, through a prior conversation, I learned that you were away in, uh, I think, Melbourne, Australia for like nine years and then came back to open that academy. I did indeed, yes. I, I moved to Australia to follow, pursue my passion for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I ended up living all up the East Coast. I uh, lived in Gold Coast, Sydney, and then Melbourne, and then I moved back here, and there was still no Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu club here, so I took it upon myself to do the right thing and share the Jits love, and here we are. That's right. That's awesome. Just yeah. take, it, take it by the horns and uh, start it yourself. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know, there was nowhere to train. We've got um, a few martial arts clubs in town, um, like MMA um, there's the Timaru Freestyle Martial Arts, there's uh, Knights MMA and stuff like that. But I've had a lot of injuries, so I haven't been able to do much striking or sort of stuff like that. Hence why I can still do jiu-jitsu. So, yeah, it's been, it's been really great. Awesome, awesome. So what, um, what led you to jiu-jitsu and where did you study primarily when you were in, uh, in Melbourne? Yeah, so I was one of the ones that had the old VHS tape and seen Hoist Gracie, you know, in the first UFC, and I was like, oh my God, I've got to do this. I want to be a badass. And then I sort of, I started in New Zealand when I was working out of town, and then I moved to, uh, so I was only in Melbourne for a couple of years, and my coach there is Chris Burns, and he runs a CTC academy there at Moorabbin. Uh, but before that, I was up in Sydney. I trained under Professor Bruno Pano at Gracie Humaita, who I got my blue and purple belts off. Nice. And um, yeah, so it's been it's been quite a journey. What stands out in your quite mind as the the biggest thing that you've learned through jiu jitsu? Well, as you know, there's so many big things that you learn in jiu jitsu, but I think the real thing for me, especially as a five foot one woman 
um, is just learning that I'm worth fighting for. I know that's gone pretty deep, but... Um, and just the community. Like, the community is a real big thing for me. Yeah, and has really... Yeah, just, just the community, I'd say. It, it even goes beyond the art. Just the people that get involved with it and... Yeah, I'm just really grateful to be a part of it, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the people you meet through Jiu-Jitsu is just uh, opens up your whole world, and it's just really incredible, the connections that you make. And go back for a second. You, you said one of the things you got out of it was that you're worth fighting for. I think that's awesome. I think it's beautiful. I think mm-hmm. that's profound. And, I, and uh, yeah, don't shortchange that. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been huge for me. Um you know, we all grow up with all our own issues in life and whatever, and, um, yeah, it's whatever else is going on in your life, you know, you know that you can just jump on the mats and all your friends will be there and you're going to have fun. And Absolutely. I think that's a real big thing for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, Christy, what, uh, do you have any hobbies off the mat? What are you doing when you're not training? Um, I am obsessed with dogs and music. So you'll find me scrolling through all the um, dog Facebook pages and blasting my ears out with metal because I'm a huge metal fan. But yeah, other than that, just friends, family, you know, just trying to keep it real. (laughs) Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thanks for being a listener, by the way, to the podcast. And what do you like most about the podcast? Um, I love to your podcast because you interview um, a lot of my favorite people um, and it's very interesting so I loved the um, interview with Dr. Belissa so I'm very interested in all her breathing stuff and of course yeah all the guys all Henna and uh, Master Master Pedro and just everyone yeah I just love it oh and that Henry Aikens one yeah, that was cool. <laughs> uh, that was great. I just had a chance to uh, to to spend some time with him a few weeks ago out in L.A. as well as uh, Henry and Hedron, so it was really great. Oh, awesome. Well, I actually flew up to the North Island last year um, just to go to one of his seminars. <laughs> so, um, Amazing, yeah, it right? was really great learning off him, and I'm still using the thing that he showed that day. Wow. And my students hate me for it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably had something to do with pressuring, smothering them, right? Yes, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Right on, right on. Well, listen. Do you have anybody you want to uh, thank or shout out to, uh, as well as uh, give us your um, where your academy is, or either your website or some way to follow up with you? Yeah, great. So, yeah, um, I just I'd love to give a shout out to all my friends and family that have supported me through this past year and a half that the academy's been open. All my training partners in Australia especially, and my students at Timaru Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like, I just, I love them so much. And also, um, Jess Fraser from Australian Girls and Gi, she runs this huge community that's developing women's um, Jiu-Jitsu in Australia, and it's it's gone from strength to strength over the years, and this year um, we're about to do, well, in a month's time on the 2nd of February, Jess has organised a camp for 140 women just north of Sydney. So I'm heading over there short, uh, in a few weeks' time to be an assistant coach at that, and I'm very excited. Awesome. But, yeah, the, the support from that community is huge as well. And just and you, thanks for, um, thanks for doing this cool podcast and connecting all us crazy jiu-jitsu guys from around the world. <laughs> oh, well, that one's my yeah. pleasure for sure. Well, I will put the uh, <laughs> links uh, to the, in the show notes to your website as well as to that upcoming camp. And uh, yeah, thank cool. you so much for not only being a listener, but for letting us get a glimpse of uh, who you are and into your life, Kirsty. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Cheers. You too. Bye-bye. All right. I always enjoy doing the Meet the Listener segment. It's always great to be able to connect with and meet people from all over who listen to the show. All right. Moving on. Carlos Enrique Elias, better known as Master Kaiki is a 7th degree red and black belt master of BJJ. And he's the owner and head instructor of Kaiki Jiu-Jitsu Academy and the Kaiki Jiu-Jitsu Network. He's originally from Brazil, and in 1996, 
He moved to the United States to teach at the Gracie Academy in Torrance. He's one of only a handful of non-family members awarded the black belt from Grandmaster Elio Gracie. And in March 2009, he was awarded his seventh degree red and black belt by Master Hickson Gracie. In 2001, Master Kaiki formed his own school, the Kaiki Jiu-Jitsu Academy, which is now located in Lomita, California. And I had the distinct honor of recently sitting down with him at his academy for this interview. In this interview, he discusses his start in martial arts, his long and close relationship with Grandmaster Elio, what it was like coming to the U.S. back in the 90s, the value of competing, and the current state of belts and promotions, what he does when he's not on the mat, and more. He's a true legend in jiu-jitsu, and it was my honor to sit down and have a conversation with him. After the interview, stay tuned for a short Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Okay, without further ado, let's meet Master Kaiki now. Okay, I have the distinct honor of being here live and in person with Master Kaiki Elias, seventh degree Jiu Jitsu black belt and owner and head instructor of Kaiki Jiu Jitsu Academy and the Kaiki Jiu Jitsu Network. So, welcome to the show, sir. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So, you've had a long and interesting history in martial arts, sir. So, please share with us how it all began for you. I believe you started out in judo. Is that correct? Yes, yes. I started to do judo when I was a. Uh, Young teenager was 12 years old, and I did judo for a couple of years before I got involved with jiu-jitsu. And uh, the reason I got involved with jiu-jitsu was uh, I used to surf with my friend Helson Gracie, and uh, I see how he was taking care of business with this surf guys that like you know i think they thought they were tougher than they <laughs> really were and, and, found and, pretty yeah, and, they and right? i say oh i gotta learn this you know <laughs> otherwise <laughs> i'm gonna have to keep calling for protection <laughs> right 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 so where did it go from there for you well then went pretty good you know i i got involved on this and i used to my a hobby and my my sport priority was surfing and I was going to college and and stuff like that and uh, Jiu Jitsu became a priority for me. It was was something that really changed my life, you know? And meeting the Grace family was a great thing for me too because I was like in a in a times where these things were all magical, you know? And we were an elite team, it was a very small group that practiced Jiu-Jitsu. So at that time we had pretty much the supremacy over self-defense, over the martial art aspect. And uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot on how to eat and how to, you know, to live life in terms of the martial art spirit. So for me, it was, was great. You know, Jiu-Jitsu really, like if I do today, I'll, what we want to do is to change people's life for better, you know? Right. And that happens with me. So yeah. I was... On and off the mat, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. I was, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a witness of this change. You know, because in Brazil at that time, we were growing up there, was a pretty wild society. Even that we were, mostly of us, were uh, belonging from privileged families, you know, because Jiu-Jitsu was not cheap and was really something that was done in a medium to high class people. And... The society was pretty wild, and I saw many of the people I know get involved in, in, in different aspects of their life that turning them to become or losers or criminals or, you know? So, mm-hmm. Jiu-Jitsu really 
uh, put me in a different uh, level to to see how my life was going to be. You, you know? gave you a better direction, right? Oh yeah, way better direction. So, so how long had you been training before you came over to the United States? I believe in 1996. Yeah, I came to United States 1996. Yes, I I was training at from 1996. I was training probably for maybe 18 years, mm -hmm. you know? So it was uh, 1996, was uh, probably 20 years. Okay. Yeah, so. What was it like uprooting and coming here in, uh, in those early days? Um, it was pretty good, you know? I came in and I, I was invited by Elio Gracie to come here for 15 days to help it out. At that time, Royce Gracie was still active on the UFC and uh, they need someone to teach the classes while he was taking care of his own business. So I came to help and I was a trustable man for, for Helio Gracie and uh, I like it and I ended up staying. So, you know, at that time it was great because Jiu-Jitsu is still a new thing. It wasn't like today, but, it, you know, that, was, that made way easier for me to get my papers in the United States, to be, you know, all fully legally here. And, and so it was, was great, you know, I, I really appreciate that because it, in today I appreciate this country and I'm really uh, uh, happy that we came in and I brought my kids here, you know? Nice. So, Sounds like you've made a really good life for yourself here too. Yeah, I make a good life for me here and I match myself with the values and all the, the expectations that this country put on the citizen, you know? So yes. I... I'm really happy about that. So you someone know? who immigrates and comes here and starts a new life, I suspect it really gives you a unique perspective and a, a unique appreciation of it. Oh, yeah. You know what? Uh, that is a, a lot of people don't know exactly what this country is about. You know, when you live in a different country, you get this dimension on how things are different, mm -hmm. all right? So if you go to Brazil, I like to tell people that because that's one aspect that's really valuable in the United States and people don't don't understand that or they don't know that is the equality that the citizens get here. So if you go to Brazil today, even today, you want to play golf, you need to be a millionaire or you need to be referred by a millionaire. and you, Or you need to be a uh, what we call Grand Falido is a, is a person the father or the grandfather was rich, but he's poor now, but he carried the name. Gotcha. So he leave you off that. Yeah, he go play golf, but the regular people can't do it. Mm -hmm. So you come to America, the guy who sweep the street, he paid $30 and play golf here. Yeah. In a, in a nice golf course. We take a lot for granted here. That oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, sure. and this is amazing. And people don't know that. It's true. They think United States is this place where it's uh, this business. But we have such a quality here that you can't see anywhere else. Very true. You know, if you go to Europe, it's probably the same thing as Brazil, pretty much. You know? Yeah. yeah. All this aristocracy, all this uh, society that belongs from kingdoms from yeah. emperors More of a that they walk system. with the nose up but the, that is no place like here you know it's true, it's true. yeah it's and, either, and either royalty or, or uh, oh yeah pretty down on the um, oh yeah and, and, and people talk about the brazil the half of the population in brazil is african brazilian but he asking me if they have opportunities like the so-called white ones that they don't, but you come to the United States and you see uh, Afro-Americans driving BMWs, owning big business, uh, 
uh, high, uh, be working in high positions in big companies. So these kind of things, you know, yeah. make America great. And, and, and people don't know about these things, you That's know. So I like to always talk about it because it's something that I really admire and make me proud to live here, you know. I agree. And I think it's, uh, we all need more perspective and appreciation. So it's good to talk to people like you who've had that firsthand experience to oh, yeah. keep us grounded. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you mentioned Master Elio, Grandmaster Elio Gracie. Let's talk a little bit about your relationship with him. I know that he was so impressed with you that he awarded you the title of best student at the original Gracie Academy in Brazil. And I think he was quoted as saying, outside my family, Kaiki, I can say that you are the best student here. And I know you're one of only a few non-family members uh, that got awarded the black belt by Elio. Yeah, yeah. So I had a very good relationship with Elio Gracie, you know, and uh, I met him at a young age. And uh, I always, you know, I have one characteristic of myself that is a, I'm a respectful person. And I think he saw that, that I respect him, you know, and by being, we, a lot of us got raised in a way, you always respect an older person, you know, our elders. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he was the jiu-jitsu master of the world, you know. I, since today, I have a lot of admiration for him and what he did, and I always think about it. I can see no one match what he has done. And his brother also, Carlos Gracie, in a different perspective because he decided to dedicate himself more to the spiritual and physical side of Jiu-Jitsu. And Elio Gracie stay running the fighting and the whole tough stuff. But the the fact that he dedicated his life to jiu-jitsu like no one else is really admirable, you know? For sure. And I, it's like I say, I'm a loyal person. I'm someone that I, when I say this is the people that I dedicate my friendship, my loyalty, so that's the way I am. And I think he recognized that. And so he gave me a distinguished treatment, you know, and I... I always being fair, I always being honest, I always being like someone that can be trustable. So, you know, I think I earned his trust. And, and I used to go to the market with him to buy stuff, you know, far away driving. I used to go to different places with him and help it out, do this, do that. So he let me be close to him and, and that's something I, I always keep on my memories because yeah. that's a good memory you know Absolutely. some people got mad on him because the way he was in terms of uh, the way he talked the way he's like hey, he's a tough guy you know it's just that you you or you submit yourself to that and understand hey, look this is a guy that's like he you know should be admired and don't need to feel offended by anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, and that's it. That's the way I was. And uh, I, I got this close to him. And, uh, you know, I actually, Pedro Valente was the, 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 has the family. The family was very close to, to Elio. And he was Elio's student, really close. He's someone that I can say was closer to Elio than I was. But yeah, I was right there, and I was I'm still very proud of that time, you know, and the time I have with him also, and his sons gave me this foundation of jiu-jitsu, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's a foundation that we have that sometimes I try to pass as much as I can, but the, I see that sometimes people missing that, you know? Right. To keep the jiu-jitsu we have as a martial art, as something that's done for self-defense, you know? So is there anything that sticks out in your mind about uh, Grandmaster Elio that... Is there anything that stands out in your mind that um, 
or, or what comes to mind? Any memories that just pop out when you think about Grandmaster Elio? Well, yeah, that's a lot of memories I have. I have memories that I trained with him, you know? Yeah. A person way older than me, and he always say, a mouth on me here, try to get, <laughs> try to choke me. Yeah. And I, so, you know, that was a lot of, a lot of things. You love that, to do that, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Like. That was a lot of things we have done that way, you know? Mm -hmm. And I always like him trying to ask you questions and stuff, you know, and of course he, with time and he start to trust you, he's like, you know, willing mm -hmm. to answer you and help you out. And he feel, I can see he feel like, oh good, he's coming to me to, uh, you know, for help. So that, that, that's pretty cool, you know? And that's uh, cool. Yeah, so that was, that was something that I, remember that really stick in my my memory you know nice it's great that you had that time all that time that you got to share with him and i know you've also had relationships with a lot of the family henzo Orion, everybody i know you've got a lot of your ranking and spent a lot of time with max hickson so tell us a little bit about that relationship yeah so hickson was uh, like i we met him young you know he's he's still like he training and, and growing up on his belt ranks. So I, I was training with his brother Helson and then I, Helson moved out from, from Brazil and I moved to, to Hickson's Academy, Hickson Helio Gracie Academy, you know. And uh, the time he, I trained with Helson, I have a, a relationship with Elio Gracie because they were son uh, sure. was right there. But he, Elio has his, his school with the Hickson there, and uh, then I moved to that school, and b we were the same team, but in uh, different locations, you know. So then I moved to that school and I started to train with the Hicks on that and, and that's when I learned a lot because there was not too many students there and Hicks on need to train and it was just me and a couple other guys, you know? So we got beat up every day <laughs> and uh, we learning, you know? And it, it, it's, it's interesting because you get smashed by someone that is younger than you, you know? But I never have in my mind this pride to be, this is something that helped me a lot. That I was never have walking in to the school with any pride towards my instructors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Always respectful, always trying to learn, always like, you know, demonstrate to them that I'm learning, that I can do good and stuff like that. And that really helped me to learn, you know, mm, to great progress. Mindset. Great yes. mindset to have. So I adapted my game a lot towards Hickson game because the time, so much time we spend on the mat with him, you know, so that helped me really much to, to, to develop my Jiu Jitsu. And, and like I say, it was a privilege for me because at that time it was a small group. Yeah. Not too many great people, you know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Not too many people, so. So we were talking before the, the interview, and you brought up the subject of belts. So you wanted to talk a little bit about... Well, yeah, that's this belt thing is today is pretty funny, because I never thought about a belt. The, the truth is this. And when I go back and I think, I say, did I ever think about... It? I never thought about the belt. And you do good. And the, your instructor watch you and feel you deserve, you go, all right? So I think today we have the teaching way better structure. So the students today can learn with more uh, uh, structural programs, you know? So you learn it as you go and you learn with, with the program set that uh, when you come to class, you know what mm -hmm. you're gonna work with, you know? So, of course, that we progressive a lot on, on that aspect. And uh, 
in today's world, what we do here, and I make sure the students understand that as long as they're in class, and that's something I learned with Elio Gracie, uh, is, is the instructor's fault if they don't learn. Mm. All right, so we keep this in mind here at our school. And I tell, we tell the, the, the students, as long as they are here, they must learn because we're going to do our best. We're going to work hard for them to learn and they're going to be evaluated to be moving to our next level. But the level you move is a reward for your hard work because this martial arts is not easy. And also is a way for the instructor to differentiate mm -hmm. the people in class. You know what I mean? So, but he, I think with the mentality that was brought up from different martial arts, that, oh, you pay me, take the belt. You pay me, you know, a lot of these things happen and, and create this mentality that belt, 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 belt. But, he, you know, it's like people say the belt cover just a little bit of your, your body. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. And the rest is up to you. <laughs> exactly. So it, it's kind of embarrassing when you wear a belt and you cannot even do a basic move. Right. You know, I come from a time that you don't need to beat up everybody, but you need to know how to defend yourself because the sense of jiu-jitsu is to survive. Right. So when you are there with a purple belt, brown belt, and you're all exposed in your arms, in your neck, you don't know a basic technique to defend yourself, it's like embarrassing, you know? And I always tell our students, I say, look, I want to be proud of you guys. I don't want anybody to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. If you go to Hickson's school, if you go to Hansel's school, if you go to my friend Charles' school, or, you know, Jacare in Atlanta, you show that you know Jiu-Jitsu, you know, because it's like, it, it, it's, and people being putting themselves on these positions to wearing belts that they don't mm -hmm. uh, uh, belong to, you know. Well, it goes along with the ego. We get caught up in the belt means so much. Yeah, so much yeah. emphasis on our status but on the you belt know, instead of the training. Yeah, but you know what happened? Um, what's happened is you create a students that I call the walk around ones. You know, you put a belt and now you are afraid of the lower belt. So you walk around trying to cheat and trying to like, oh no, let's do this position here, that position there. So you don't train anymore <laughs> because you are afraid of the lower belt. Yeah. Your pride hit you hard and now pulling you back yeah it kind of locked you into some oh yeah. yeah so 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 is our job as an instructor to make sure that we teach good jiu-jitsu and we make sure that the student is ready to wear the rank he, he he's supposed to you know and i always like to say this uh, when you look at the swim team for the u.s uh, Mike Phelps is there on the front. That is a guy that never got to the front, but he's still on the team. That's true. It's the same thing. Not every black belt is going to beat up everybody, you know, but the guy needs to know the jiu-jitsu program and be effective. That's, that's the thing, you know? So, as I say to you, talking to you about this belt thing, that is, that is some things that are funny because I'm here in the United States for 21 years, all right? So I cheat some people here, white belt, when I was here. And uh, um, when I was here 20, 19, 18 years ago, I teach people here white belt. And today I see these guys with the black belts with five, six degrees. And I say, listen, it takes you 20 years to get that level. How can you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I look at that and I say, what that mean? And how did that happen? Yeah, and, and why? Right. What, what good that does, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. 
people like me that saw you before know that, hey, this is not, you know what I mean? I can't imagine why people want to do that, like make themselves have more rank or status than they have because to me, yeah. to me I would be inclined it's to ridiculous. Be the opposite almost. It's ridiculous. Just, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Crazy. And I tell you something. The people I see, there was people that I cheat, people that I don't cheat, that I see around, but the, the majority of them are good jiu-jitsu guys. They don't need to do this. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just create a big disorganization and make it like it look bad, you know? So I guide myself very easily because I have guys like Jacare and Romero Jacare in Atlanta and uh, Mauricio Gomez, the Roger Gray's father, and uh, Marcio Stamboski, the one in I think he's in Boston or something. These guys, they were high rank, high rank than me. So I cannot wear a belt that's higher than them. Mm -hmm. Good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I can't do that. This is like not right. And I see guys that got black belts before, after me, and they wearing rank higher than me. You know, I think it's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I look and I like, you know, so this belt thing became like, look, it's very important to have the belt ranks. I, as an instructor, I know that. And not trying to make myself, the, I know about Jiu Jitsu and I know how this thing works very well, you know. Mm -hmm. So the belt rank is good thing for us because, like I say, we reward those who put the effort. The students need the motivation and targets. Mm -hmm. And we also know how to separate, how to, you know, to, to match them, how to... So that help both, okay, on this progress for Jiu-Jitsu. But this cannot become... The main focus. Yeah, right. like a, 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 a banana gift, you know what right, I mean? Right. Yeah, candy. Right. Or give you like a candy. There needs to be certain standards. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then, you know, it's just making the student embarrassed. Well, and, and it dilutes. Uh, it doesn't mean as much when it comes so easy and it's given that's away. That's it, yeah. Uh, that, and, the, and the standards aren't. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it, that's it, so... You know, that's a one, one, one thing I like to talk to you about too, that I don't see too many people talk about, is about the jiu-jitsu competitions, all right? These jiu-jitsu competitions were created with the idea of the students to be able to test themselves without a punch, all right? As you know well, not everybody want to walk in there and exchange punch with someone on the ring. Right. And you see, even today, it's like, you know, go UFC, uh, you see a bunch of tough guys, but it, it's a, if you look into the population, it's a small number of people that are willing to do that. Certainly. You know? Yep. And... That is actually a show that I like to watch because it gives me so much uh, information on how to develop our jiu-jitsu and how, you know, a lot of things that you can uh, uh, fix or you can learn, you know. So, anyways, but the, the jiu-jitsu tournaments are a great way for us to have the student test himself without a punch and some of those they gonna want to compete often and keep it going mm -hmm. but some don't but what i tell our students is this once you go there at least once you are different man next time because you feel like you now i'm a real martial art guy I face someone that I never saw before, mm -hmm. and I control my fears, I 
having my, you know, my emotions there and stuff. So it's a completely different thing for that person. You know, I know a lot of schools, they are like, oh, against the tournament. And yeah, the tournament, as it is, everything for the medal, I don't like it. But the tournament is a good place for people to go and build their self-confidence. Mm. So you see how nervous they get. Right, right. No punches are allowed, but people get nervous, get all sure. like it. So on the next day, that person is a, is a different person. So I always recommend these guys to have at least once, twice experience on mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can do like an indoor tournament to make them more comfortable at first, you know? Yeah. And then you can take to, to tournaments Outside, that yeah. you trust because a lot of these tournaments too, some of them are made by people that have no idea of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So they allow heel hooks in lower belts, they knee bars, yeah. and, and they don't understand. Look, these things, if you don't have a knowledge, you're going to get hurt. Right. So they're not really thinking so much about the safety of the participants, just... Yeah, just, oh, you got to be tough. You right. break your neck, but you tough guy. <laughs> you proved you're tough. Yeah. So, so it sounds, I've heard other people um, that I respect say similar things that you're saying, like, even if competition is not the main thing or the main emphasis of your school it's great to have that experience not so much about winning or losing of course of course you want to win I mean that's going to be great if you do but even if you don't what you learn about yourself and what you get from dealing with that fear and anxiety oh of, my god of going yes. against someone you've never been seen or... I, I actually I talked to to Jacare in Atlanta another day and I told him I say I remember me when I was going for the first ones, got all nervous, all thing. And then I remember one day he called me and he said, Oh, Kaiki, this guy going to compete and he's going to be a national champion. If you don't show up there, you should go. You know? So I went there, I said, Okay, I go. And I was there like nothing, you know, because I already have that experience from before, mm -hmm. so it was easy. I actually won the, the, the national tournament nice, there nice. and it was nice in a black belt, you know? But the, because I went and I got the experience to, you know, I won, I lost, I did good, and I think I should won, but the, they gave, to, well, all that kind of stuff. Right. But the, it's a good experience, you know? Yeah. It's a good experience. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I recommend every student to have at least once the experience because it's a part of the martial art uh, uh, um, learning, you know? So. I agree, I agree. You have a beautiful academy, by the way. Love it. And uh, thank you. if anybody listening ever in the area, uh, definitely check it out and, and uh, come train with Master Kaiki. I believe your sons are, are uh, with you helping at school. What's it like having them around and, and being part of it? Well. Um, my sons, they've been doing jiu-jitsu since they are little, you know, five years old. They were training at the original Academia Gracie there in Brazil. And uh, they've been doing jiu-jitsu all this time. They came to America here young, at the young age. And uh, when they got to high school, they did all the four years in wrestling too which I was happy about it because it was a different coach, so they can, <laughs> you know, yeah. listen to the person in a different way. And uh, they start to love jiu-jitsu, and they, now they dedicate themselves to jiu-jitsu. And I think, it, on my view, they were one of the best instructors in jiu-jitsu out there, you know? Oh, so great. everybody that saying the same thing have experience with them, and. You know, my oldest son, Pedro, he runs the program for the kids, and that's something I'm very proud of him, too, because I, I, I mean, listen from the parents that the extraordinary ability he has in educating the kids. And that's a great thing we do, you know, because we're helping these kids mm -hmm. to grow up in a healthy and strong way. It's so, important. so, oh yeah. So I'm very proud of that. We have a, a great kids program here, and my youngest son, he's 
running the adult program with the help of the older one, of course, and mine. So we have a great program of jiu-jitsu here that focus always in a fundamental, focus always in a jiu-jitsu that can help you in a real life. But I always like to say that once you learn these fundamentals, when you are strong on this, you can do anything. You can spot at the academy to have fun. You can go to a jiu-jitsu tournament. You can fight on the cage. You have the base that's going to take you anywhere with the efficient jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. you know? A solid foundation. Oh, yeah, a solid foundation. Exactly that. Very nice, very nice. So, do you have any hobbies, uh, time for any hobbies other than jiu-jitsu? If so, what do you do when you're not on the mat? Well, I like to travel, you know? And uh, I travel usually to teach jiu-jitsu and stuff like that. So, I, that's something I enjoy to see different things. But uh, when I'm not on the mat, I used to take my time always to go surf, you know? Mm -hmm. Go surf, go surf, go surf. And for some reason, I always thought, I'm never gonna lose this desire. But today, I surf and I don't, I like to surf still, but sometimes I think about the cold water, I gotta put a wetsuit and <laughs> stuff, I say, mm, should I go? <laughs> and I go on and off, but uh, I really start to enjoy to build things. So I build the houses when I have opportunity that I buy something in a good deal, you mm -hmm. know, I build a home. Mm -hmm. And I start to like enjoy that, you know, all the, the, the woodwork and all the, you know, you kind of buy them and restore them and fix them up and all that? No, I, I, like I'm building a new yeah, house and scratch, I okay. put in new stuff and I do, okay, I'm going to do a new stairs, going to do a new... So I like that, you know? That's something I really enjoy. That's cool. Yeah, I've been enjoying that. And other thing I like in California, in California I can do because I used to have a ranch in Brazil. I used to be a cattleman there. I was a... A real cowboy, yeah. right? All right. Oh, yeah. That's because Jiu Jitsu was my hobby. So I have all the business, and one of the business was a Carroll Ranch. So I enjoy that in California, I can plant the, the, the food I like to eat, like the fruits, the vegetables, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's something I really like. I always been planting different things, you know? So I always. Yeah, that food that I harvest with mm -hmm. the other people, you know. So I always like to, when I have, I like to give to other people so they can enjoy that too. Yeah, that's great. There's nothing like having your own fresh food that you've grown yourself, you know, from the ground. And to be able to share that with others is, is really great too. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, it, it makes me happy about it, so... Awesome. Well, you certainly seem to uh, have a, a well-balanced life that you're living, so kudos to you for that, sir. Uh, last question is really kind of a two-part question. So what about jiu-jitsu has brought you the most joy, and what are you the most proud of? With all the things you've accomplished out through your life, what stands out as what you're the most proud of? Well, the jiu-jitsu part it was something that, on the beginning, it gave me a lot of positive things in my life, you know. It teach me because my close relationship with Elio Grace and his sons, I learned about the eating healthy. I learned about the sleep healthy, you know. And, and also I got a lot of confidence by training jiu-jitsu, by learning jiu-jitsu, by knowing that I have the knowledge of it, something that not too many people had. So that was my biggest enjoyment on jiu-jitsu in the beginning, and later on, my biggest enjoyment is to change people's lives, you know, is to use jiu-jitsu to change people's lives, you know, it's, it's great to see a kid that get confident growing up, 
not looking for trouble, nothing, but confident and know how to defend herself, know how to look other people on the eyes and answer whatever question he was asking for. And, and the women also is another gratification, is another thing that we are really proud and happy about it. That's to help the women to know how to defend themselves, to speak it out, to, you know, to know how to stop uh, things from the beginning and, and, and use jiu-jitsu as a self-defense. And then the guys, you know, the people that we change lives, you know, the, the men, adult men that's lacking confidence and lacking social skills. Like, so this whole thing, jiu-jitsu help me. And uh, I, I'm very proud to be part of this and to be one that you spread that out. So mm, yes, and you you certainly it's kind of come full circle because you talked earlier about earlier about how it gave you a positive direction and kind of saved you from going down a a bad path. So you've you've really been able to be very impactful in a lot of other lives at this point, you know, and, and turn it around and give to others and impact so many lives. So much respect to you for for doing that on such a high level. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Mother. Yeah, I'm very proud of this. And my son's now doing the same thing. So we 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 are, on the reality, a big network that sometimes don't even talk to each other, but going around the world is spreading jiu-jitsu and spreading the uh, good behavior of the jiu-jitsu practitioner, you know? So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So before we close, is there any anyone you want to thank or shout out to? Well, I want to thank you for the time that I got introduced to jiu-jitsu and, and uh, uh, opportunities that I have to learn jiu-jitsu, to Elio Gracie, to his son's health on and hits on Gracie, you know, and... Uh, I want to thank you to all my students, you know, for the support they've been giving all these years, for their respect, their loyalty. So this is uh, something that I will carry all my life. So Very nice. Very nice. Well, again, it's been uh, an absolute pleasure and my honor to speak with you, sir. And uh, I wish you a long and healthy and happy life. Uh, thank you very much, Marty, to you too and, and your family. Thank you, sir. Okay, always a pleasure speaking with uh, a legend in the jiu-jitsu world as Master Kaiki is. Stay tuned now for the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Okay, time for the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Let's start with a quote. A year from now, you will wish you had started today. And that's from Karen Lamb. And it's a good quote. You know, where will you be a year from now? It's a new year. It's a time for new opportunities, new growth, new direction. And I'd like to ask you, what changes would you like to make in this year? And if your life is pretty darn great the way it is, wonderful. Kudos to you. And if there's no big, giant change that you need to make in your life, and most of us do have pretty significant changes that would certainly make our lives better. But if that's not you, if you don't have any big changes, what small changes, what seemingly insignificant changes could you make to improve your life? You know, sometimes we underestimate the value of small changes. Maybe we're not ready to make big changes in our lives, but think about the power of small changes when you commit and you're consistent to that change. So imagine, if you will, you're looking at a piece of paper and you have a a dot on the paper as a starting point. And if you draw a line straight up north from that point, you have a certain trajectory. Now imagine going back to that starting dot or point and making a change of one degree. And now as a, a new line extends out from that point north with a one degree difference in direction. 
At first, it's not much of a difference at all. One degree is very small when you're very close to the starting point. But as you get further away from that point of origin, the gap gets a lot wider. The trajectory is much, much more different in that second line. And so it is with us. If we make a small, you know, one or two percent difference, a change that involves one or two percent difference in our lives, over time, it's going to make a significant impact in our lives. So don't get caught up in thinking you have to make some huge change to improve your life. What small changes can you make today and by being committed and consistent, improve your life over time? What would you like to have accomplished or be different in your life next year when you're looking back over this year? Whatever that is for you, commit to it now, put it in action, and go for it. And I look forward to being with you through the year and continuing on this awesome journey called life. And that's going to do it for this edition of the show. As always, I thank you for listening. Hope you're enjoying the show. If you feel like you're benefiting from the show and want to show your support, you can support us on our Patreon page and the link in the show notes. Please like and follow us on social media and help us spread the word by reposting our posts and telling others about the show. You can leave comments on the website at www.racyjujitsurocks.com. You can also go to iTunes and leave comments as well as rate the show. And we would appreciate a five-star rating, which helps us with our standing in iTunes. You can also leave comments on our YouTube channel. If you have suggestions for the show, please don't hesitate to give those. We always like feedback and suggestions. Okay, that's going to do it. So until next time, this is Marty Josie, and I'll see you on the map.